Hi. I don't know about you, but we've always loved monkey bread at our house. And if you haven't had monkey bread, some people call it pull apart bread, but it's little pieces of dough that you roll in cinnamon and sugar, and usually you put it in a bunk pan and you bake it, and then you can pull it apart or you can slice it. Well, when I started playing with the dough from my Miracle Biscuit, I decided it would make a great cinnamon roll. I rolled it out, made cinnamon rolls. They were really yummy. And then I thought, hmm, I can make monkey bread because there are a lot of low carb cinnamon recipes out there, but cinnamon roll recipes, but not monkey bread. And when I mentioned making monkey bread, someone said, why not make gorilla bread? I'd never heard of gorilla bread. Well, it's a Paula Dean recipe. And I can't wait to share this with you because this is really pretty close to the real thing. Let's get started and I'll explain as I go. We're gonna mix our dry ingredients first. And I, um, I made this recipe several times using oat fiber. I am trying to use coconut flour this time, so we'll see how the dough turns out. In the video description, I will give you the recipe using oat fiber and using a sec this one using coconut flour so that you can make it depending on what ingredients you have on hand. I'm starting with three quarters cup, and I'm making sure I say this right, no, I'm sorry, one half cup. One half cup of almond flour. So it's one half cup almond flour. And then I'm going to use a quarter cup of coconut flour. Now you may end up doubling this recipe, but I'm just using a half cup of almond flour and a full quarter cup of coconut flour. Finely ground almond flour is what I tend to use. I order it from Honeyville. Um, I'm going to add to these dry ingredients. This is three quarters of a cup of sucrin gold brown sugar. Now this is a low carb brown sugar made by sucrin. I love this stuff. I use it all the time. If you don't have sucrin brown sugar, you can order it from sucrinusa.com. Use code friends for a 10% discount. Or you can use your favorite granulated sweetener and a quarter to a half teaspoon of molasses. Now molasses have sugar and so I try to avoid that, but if you don't have the sucrum brown on hand, it is an option for you, or sucrum gold. Okay, so, so far we've got our almond flour, coconut flour, baking, um, I mean a uh, sweetener. Let's put in some baking powder. I'm putting a full teaspoon of baking powder. I'm going to put in a half teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to put in one um, and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. Now you can put two, cinnamon, uh, two teaspoons of cinnamon if you like it. I'm putting one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon uh, because we're gonna layer the cinnamon. And once I made it, I thought the cinnamon was really strong. My husband thought it was perfect. So you may want to adjust that to your taste. So that's just my dry ingredients. This is a lot like the Miracle Biscuit recipe with some variations of the sweetener and the brown sugar. And of course, we're trying the coconut flour out in this. Um, I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to do the mozzarella in the microwave. Now, this is going to use one and a quarter cups of mozzarella and three ounces of cream cheese. And I just put it all in there together. I'm going to microwave it on a reduced power. I like to take it down to level six. My microwave is pretty powerful. So I'm going to take it to level six. Actually, that was five. I'm going to put it on for 39 seconds and let that go. While it's doing its thing, I'm going to add to the dry ingredients two eggs, it's just two eggs. I normally use one, but with the coconut flour, it needs structure, and so I'm using two for this recipe. And then I'm going to add vanilla extract. This is a full teaspoon of vanilla extract. You can use more if you'd like. And folks have um, messaged me about vanilla extract because they know I love it so much. Well, I do really love it, but I also, have looked at different brands and some of them, some of the really popular ones have sugar in the ingredient list. So whatever vanilla extract you're using, make sure that it doesn't have sugar. And I'm sure that the brands folks have recommended to me um, are delicious, but if they have sugar, um, that may be why they like them so much. So we've done this for a few seconds. It's soft, but it's not melted. We're gonna have to put that back in and just stir it together because sometimes the cream cheese and the mozzarella will kind of melt together, but they, um, they need a stir. So let's put this back in. Now, when we get this nice and soft and all mixed up, um, we're going to add the butter to it. The butter doesn't need to mix in, it just needs to melt. 
And so that's what we're interested in doing is just making it melt. So let's talk a little bit about Gorilla Bread and Monkey Bread. So Monkey Bread, you make the dough and you just roll it in cinnamon sugar and then you put it in the bump pan and pull apart. Gorilla Bread is like, I guess, a bigger version of Monkey Bread. Gorilla Bread, you stuff little pieces of cream cheese in the dough before you bake it. And so I guess that's why it's called Gorilla Bread. And I had not had this before until it was recommended to me. So let's give this a try. Oh yeah, it's getting nice and soft. And basically you just want it soft enough that the cream cheese is melting into the mozzarella so that you can incorporate it into the other dry ingredients. Now, it's cool, you're gonna have to get your hands in this. I have not been able to make this dough um, that I don't get my hands into it. Most things I make, I do get my hands in anyway. That needs a few more seconds. And again, this may vary. You can do this recipe on the stovetop. Um, and you don't have to reduce the power. I just don't want to overdo it. Uh, you can do it on the stovetop, and that's an easy thing to do as well um, because you're, you kind of keep a constant heat. Um, okay. And normally, when I pull it out, as I stir the dough, yeah, it's getting a nice consistency. As I stir this to incorporate the cream cheese and the mozzarella, you can put in the butter and the butter will melt from the heat. Now the butter I'm using, this is three tablespoons of butter. That's Kerrygold salted butter. And I wanted to mention about the mozzarella. Um, I am using, I've used whole fat, um, whole milk mozzarella, and I've also used uh, reduced fat mozzarella, and either has worked great. I'm gonna warm that a little more just to give the butter a head start. This isn't necessarily a fast recipe, I apologize for that. Um, but once we get it all in there, you'll see how yummy this can be. Um, I made it, my husband came home, he had never had Gorilla Bread, and he tried the first batch I made. And um, I said, how'd you like the Gorilla Bread? And he said, I don't know what that is, but that stuff with the cinnamon's really good. And that was the uh, Gorilla Bread he was into. In fact, he's into some of it now. So yeah, we just melt that. I should have melted the butter in this container while this was going, but oh well. Hindsight, it's 50-50, right? You can just fast forward me. Okay. <laughs> I've got to get the butter melted. And once the butter is melted, we can add it in. Okay. And again, you're not trying to really incorporate the butter into, let do a few more seconds. You're not trying to incorporate the butter into the mozzarella. You're just trying to get it to melt. So I could have put it in earlier. So we'll let that go a little bit longer. I'm also gonna use some sucrine, um, gold fiber syrup and that's going to be in the layers in between on our gorilla bread i'll show you that if you don't have the fiber syrup i'll give you another option um, but that really does make this really moist and sticky and it's hard to get that sticky consistency with um, low carb items all right butter is melted this is looking really good i'm just going to throw all of this in here together Okay, now I'm gonna use the spatula to give it a mix, but it won't mix really, really well. Maybe if I had it on the stovetop, it would do it without me getting my hands in it, but I'll be honest, I don't mind getting my hands in the dough. Okay, that's about as far as I'm gonna be able to take it <laughs> without getting my hands in it. Okay, so when I do it, it's kind of like making meatloaf. I just squish it. And I will tell you, um, a subscriber made the Miracle Biscuits and she said, mine didn't rise quite like yours. And as we were talking, uh, messaging, she said, I needed it a, quite a bit. And I was said, oh yeah, you don't wanna do that. Um, you, the reason you need traditional dough is because there's gluten and the gluten gets stronger the more that you work it and knead it. But there's no gluten in this. And so, you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to squish it. Um, I am squeezing it between my fingers the way I do meatloaf, if you do your meatloaf that way. But I don't, um, I try not to overdo it. And it does take a fairly gentle hand. 
Okay, it looks like our dough is mixed. Now here comes the fun part, and I'm gonna need some help with this. And so, guess who's gonna help me? Not my daughter. This is my husband, David. <laughs> he is not necessarily a willing participant, but um, he's, you know, kind of what I had today, right? So I still love you. <laughs> David is not... Um, <laughs> not confident? Not comfortable, not as comfortable in the kitchen as I am. And so I'm gonna show him how to do it. And basically, you need to use a gentle hand. You wanna take little bits of dough, okay, about like that. And you wanna pick, I've already put this cream cheese. Now I've taken three ounces of cream cheese and I've just made them basically pebble size, okay? So just like a little rock. <laughs> so you take one of these and you put it in that and you wrap it and you don't like squish it into, you just gently wrap it around, okay? Okay. And you just put it, like for now I'll lay it in there. Okay, you got that? You think uh -huh, you can you do that? You better watch me and make sure, is that enough? Uh, that's a lot, that's kind of big, but that's okay. You can, you can work with that. And then think my bite size, not your bite size. And you just cover it up with um, the cream cheese. So the, you're like, you're hiding. You're <laughs> hiding the cream cheese in the day. That big perfect. Part. It's a little bigger than mine, but that's perfect. Okay, so while David works on that <laughs> and perfects his technique, I'm going to come over here and show you what else we're going to do. So here's the bump pan. Now I'm using a mini bump pan just for the sake of time. And I've got it very well oiled with coconut oil. And I, I used um, refined coconut oil because it has less of a flavor than uh, unrefined and someone in the family doesn't really care for uh, refined very well, very much. Okay, I've got dough on my hands. Let's mix up the next goodness that goes in to this. So what we're gonna do, David's gonna make those little balls. I'm going to melt butter, and I'm going to mix butter, cinnamon, and sugar, brown sugar, sucre and gold, together. Now, how can you go wrong with that kind of mixture? So basically what I have in here is one third of a cup of, um, one third of a cup of sucre and gold, brown sugar. Again, if you don't have it, use um, your sweetener with some molasses. I'm going to put in this two teaspoons, no, that's two tablespoons. I meant to do two teaspoons. Oh my, that's gonna be a lot of cinnamon. Okay, that'll work. Um, people really who love cinnamon, that won't be too much. You may want to increase the sweetener. Basically, you want to use two, te okay. two teaspoons of um, cinnamon, and some people use more and love it. Okay, and so to this, I gotta keep melting butter. That butter is another three tablespoons of butter. So what I've mixed, if in case I lost you, you're going to mix one third cup of sucre and brown, two teaspoons of cinnamon, and three tablespoons of melted butter. Okay, get something to mix this up with. Now, that's better. Okay, this is gonna be very cinnamony. And what you can also do is add, if you'd like, a teaspoon or so of vanilla extract. As I like to put vanilla, of course, in everything. Vanilla makes it better. Yeah. Actually, this butter makes it better. Oh, butter makes it better. Butter well. makes it better. <laughs> and you'll recognize this as you put it together. It'll look kind of familiar. Um, okay, so as David has made these balls, I'm just going to take them and dip them in here. Now, another thing I'm going to do before I put them in the pan, I have chopped pecans. I actually have a half a cup of chopped pecans. And I'm going to take those pecans and just sprinkle them in the bottom of the bump pan. Um, I love the, I've made it with pecans and I've made it without pecans and I really like it better with the pecans. And I had a half cup of chopped pecans. I've put about a half of a cup in there. And the, so what I'm going to do is roll this in the cinnamon sugar butter mixture and you can see it's just all gooey and I'm going to put it down um, into the pan. And what you do is you take, if you're familiar with traditional monkey bread or traditional um, Gorilla bread, you just take it and layer it down in the dish in the bottom. Once I get a good layer, I'm going to use the sucre and gold fiber syrup um, to make it even more gooey. You could also add some melted butter in there. Um, and so, this is you can see why I'm glad to have the help in doing this because it does take a little more time. Now, I've taken this dough 
and I have baked it just um, like as a loaf bread for cinnamon, a cinnamon bread, and it was really good. So even without the um, yumminess of the cream cheese, I mean, that reminds me, I need to tell you about the cream cheese. I use Trader Joe's, and I just bought some within the past two weeks. It is still, my version says it's still one carb, but a subscriber did contact me and say that she had bought Trader Joe's cream cheese and the package was two carbs, it had gone up. So check the package for yourself. You know, I really try to grab that one carb um, Trader Joe's when I can. Organic Valley, I believe, is still one carb, but you know, it's just the message here is um, always check because the formulas do change from time to time and they don't always tell us that. Okay, and you can see what I've done is I'm just layering this down. I'm putting it in, I'm not squishing it. I'm just laying it on top of each other and it will just kind of come together as it bakes and it will make a real layer of yummy goodness. Okay, so once I get a good layer in here, I'm going to use the Fiber Gold Brown Syrup. See how I'm doing this? Pretty. If anything happens to me, you'll be able to carry on the tradition. It's good stuff. <laughs> I don't know that I could ever do it as good as you do, but it's so good. And David's not crazy about pecans, but um, did you care? Did you have a preference for the pecan or the nut pecan? I, when did I eat the pecan? Is that the little dish? Yeah, the little dish I made. I didn't even notice. Okay, so but they the, didn't add a lot for you. So I have a really nice layer there, and I'm going to take my super gold. This is again Sucrin uh, Fiber Syrup Gold. I love it because it has a great depth of flavor. Now I'm not measuring, but what I'm doing, and I wish you could see this, I'm just coating this really, really well. Just imagine that you're giving it a nice bath <laughs> with the uh, Sucrin Fiber Gold. I am guessing that I have used a third cup on each layer as I've made it but you want this to be gooey. And again, getting that sticky gooeyness is not very easy. Now, if you don't have the Sucrum products, you can order them. If you don't order them or you wanna make this before you can get the products, you can use um, some of the sugar-free maple syrups that are on the market or pancake syrups that are on the market. Um, be careful with those. The ones that have molotol do spike my blood glucose and they also upset my tummy. Um, but there is some made with xylitol that you can use. Xylitol usually is safe for me. Um, it isn't safe for your pets, however, so we don't like to have it in our house if we can help it because we have had a scare with one of our four-legged critters. So I'm sprinkling more pecans on that. This is really smelling good, isn't it? It's interesting. The dough actually smells like real dough. Have you tried the dough? I have not. Yeah, I usually make this with um, oat fiber, and I really prefer the oat fiber. And uh, so many folks don't have oat fiber or are not comfortable using it because it does come from a grain. So I'm doing this recipe with the coconut flour to give those folks an option. So it's kind of time intensive, but it's kind of fun having some help in the kitchen. <laughs> um, even if my daughter wasn't going to help me today, she, um, she feel isn't well. feeling good. Yeah, she isn't feeling good. So she probably would not be great helping. Um, I'm going to try and speed this up a little bit. Now I'm going to put this in the oven at 325 degrees. And ovens are different. And I, remember, I have this in a small container. It's gonna go for about 30 to 35 minutes. If it starts to get too brown on top, but still seems really doughy in the middle, then I will cover it with foil and let it keep going. Um, I have also, um, and it was kind of by accident, I've also turned my oven off and let it stay for 30 minutes or so. I had to run get uh, one of the kids somewhere, and so I turned the oven off and came back, and it actually was fine to do that. Okay. Man, this is really looking good. I can't wait to get it out of the oven and try it. Too. And you're just stuffing it in here. Oops. I'm gonna try to be more, more fast, more faster. <laughs> and I'm about to get this container full. And so we can do something else with those if we have to. You can also use a little mini bunt pan, like I said, and bake these in there and they make really nice gifts. 
I have, the reason I oiled this so well with coconut oil is I was really nervous about whether it would come out. And every time I've made it, it's come out okay. Um, the last time it was a little bit sticky, but I didn't use pecans. Um, and I, but every time I've been super nervous, and like I said, I, I really oil it well. That's about all I'm gonna try right now. And in fact, I'm gonna split that guy because I need a little one there. Actually, I need a little one there and I need a little one here. So you just want to fill in. I'm going to... Would you like me to stick that in the oven and get a little bump pan? No, this is fine. Um, okay. I try to be hopeful. <laughs> you do a great job. I'm putting more pecans on here, and you guessed it, I'm gonna put more fiber syrup, because what happens is it just runs... Mm. Cinnamon mixture's good. Not too much It just cinnamon. runs... Not too much cinnamon. I used a full tablespoon. Um, and some people like cinnamon more than others. Now this is going to bake, like I said, at 325. So for, if for about 30 minutes, I'm going to start checking it at 25 minutes and we'll see how it goes. If it gets too hot, too brown, I'll cover it with foil and you can let it sit in the oven. Mm. Pretty good. <laughs> and you can see I started with probably two thirds of a bottle and I'm down, I use probably another third of a bottle to make this recipe. You can also, there's a little more melted butter in here. You can pour a little more melted butter over the top because butter makes it better. And we'll put that in the oven and in a little bit, we'll see what we have. We've baked this for about 35 minutes at 325 degrees. And I covered it the last 10 minutes or so, I covered it with foil and it's just been resting for close to an hour now. So it's starting to cool. And Grace wasn't here to help, but she's here to taste test, right? Yeah. I'm just gonna flip it over. Now I've made this a couple of times and haven't had any issues with it coming out. And I didn't this time either, yay. You can see the pecans and the syrup that were in the bottom. What do you think? It's really good. <laughs> it does look really good. And it looks gooey and delicious. It's really gooey. This is our Gorilla Bread. And um, let's take a slice. Now, what I had done, you want to get a plate, Grace? Get a plate and a fork. <laughs> okay. What I had done was I took some of the leftovers, and um, I'd love to get a picture of this before I cut it. I took some of the leftovers and um, of the dough and just put it in the pan with um, some syrup and stuff tossed over it. And is it, is it pretty? Well, I've already cut it now. <laughs> okay. And let's see how it lifts out. Probably, oh, get the um, thing that Miss <gasps> Noreen sent us. Really good friend of mine on Facebook sent me and Grace this wonderful high heeled spatula for Christmas. And we love this high heeled spatula. She just sent it to us as a gift. And that was Miss Noreen, Noreen Mendela. And she's in the, um, oh, wow. Okay. Grace, my fingers are sticky. Let me put this little bit on there too. And hang on before you get into it. This, you can see, it's got the little pieces we put in there and um, it's got the pecans. And Grace is gonna kill me because she's ready to get into it. <laughs> All right, tell me what you think. I'm gonna cut another little piece for me. What do you think? How we do? What does it taste like? Oh, like wow. Cinnamon rolls and Christmas mixed together. <laughs> cinnamon rolls and Christmas mixed together. Mmm. This, um, this is the version made with coconut flour. And I have to tell you, it is more moist. Mm -hmm. And it is just fantastic. It's perfect. Um, so if you have oat fiber, you can make that one. It's, it's a little more dry, moist, but the, yeah, this coconut version is much more moist and gooey. Um, and if you don't have time to make the little balls and put the cream cheese in, we did um, just kind of throw it all in the pan and put the syrup and the pecans and everything over and bake it. And that was fantastic too. What do you think? I think Grace likes it. <laughs> I hope that you were able to make Gorilla Bread for your family and that they enjoy it as much as we do.